this series of questions uh, we didn't get to in class, but it's it's kind of like working through everything we did in class just in one question and then with some real numbers um, as opposed to kind of the, the simplified numbers we were using in class. And so, you know, let's say we've got this reaction, chlorine dioxide uh, reacts with uh, hydroxide to form chlorate, chlorite, and water. Um, what is the rate law for this reaction? So to find the rate law, we, remember, we want to take a look at each species in the reaction, and we want to change the concentration and observe the change in rate. And when we're doing that, we only want to change one concentration at a time. So um, to find the rate with respect to chlorine dioxide, I want to use experiment one and two because the hydroxide concentration stays the same. And then in the next step, to find the impact and the rate with respect to hydroxide, I want to use experiment three and four because in experiment three and four, the hydroxide concentration changes and the chlorine dioxide concentration stays the same. So I want to use one and two together and then two and three together to find the impact that each of those has on the rate of the reaction so I can find the rate law of the reaction. Um, and in class, we were kind of just looking at very simple numbers of doubling this and doubling that. Oh, that's first order. So this one will be a little bit um, different. And to kind of help with that, and this is an equation that's not really in the book, but it's just something that helps. Basically, I what I use is, you know, concentration large divided by concentration small raised to n and that equals my rate from the larger concentration divided by the rate from my smaller concentration and n equals my reaction order. Right, and that's what we're looking for. That's what we need to have in our rate law. Um, so for the chlorine dioxide, right, my highest concentration, 0 0.06, my lowest, 0 0.03, raised to the power of n equals my largest rate, 0 0.0248, divided by 0 0.00276. I divide and I get three raised to the power of n equals nine, right? What is n? What is our reaction order, right? This has to be a second order relationship with respect to chlorine dioxide because I tripled the concentration here and as I tripled the concentration, Right, my rate didn't triple. My rate actually went up by a factor of nine. So that's a second order relationship for the chlorine dioxide. Now for the hydroxide, we're gonna do the same experiment, right, the same calculation, um, except for I wanna use experiments two and three. So I've got 0 0.09 is my concentration, 0 0.03 divided by N and now my larger rate is 0 0.00828, and my smaller rate is 0 0.00276. So when I divide those, right, I get three to the n, and let's see. I think that's gonna go in there three times as well. Yeah, equals three. So in this case, n equals one, that's a first order relationship. So the rate law for this reaction would simply be rate equals my rate constant times the concentration of chlorine dioxide squared times the concentration of hydroxide to the first because we found we had a second order relationship with respect to chlorine dioxide and a first order relationship with respect to hydroxide. For the next part, you might think you don't have enough information to solve this, but we do, right? Because we have the rate law, 
So we really can find the rate constant of this reaction um, because all we need to do is basically just pick one of these experiments because in experiment one, I have this concentration, I have this concentration, and then I have the rate for that reaction. So we could literally just plug in the information from experiment one and solve for K. We could use that for any of those experiments, but we'll just do experiment one. So we know in experiment one, the rate is 0 0.0248 molar per second. My rate constant times 0 0.06 molar squared times 0 0.03 molar to the first. So 0 0.06, we square that. 0 0.036 times 0 0.03, and I get 0 0.0248 molar per second equals my rate constant. Um, we squared molarity, and then when we multiply, we add those exponents, so um, I get 1.08 times 10 to the minus 4 molarity cubed. Divide both sides, 1.08 times 10 to the minus 4 molarity cubed. All right, and I'm doing this because we're asked to find proper units, right? So units of my rate constant, 0 0.0248 divided by that. Um, I get approximately, we'll say, 2.30 times 10 to the 2. And my correct units, right, this cancels out. One of those cancels out. So when I flip that up, molarity to the minus 2 inverse seconds because we have a third order reaction. So we found the rate law using the data table, using change in concentration, what's my change in rate, use that information to say, okay, second order relationship here, first order relationship overall, this is third order because we'd add these exponents together. Once we came up with our rate law, we can then find the rate constant of that reaction. We'd give you a data table that would have those concentrations and rate data. You'd use that data table to figure the rate law. After you figured out the rate law, you could find the rate constant. Once you knew the rate constant, you could find the rate at any concentration of those species in the reaction. Or if I gave you the rate um, and maybe one of the concentrations, right, you could find the other concentration. Um, but this will be the most common version of the question you'd see, where I would give you the, the data table, concentrations rate, and you come up with the rate law for that reaction. So hopefully that, that helps kind of get an idea of, of how to walk through um, these calculations. And now that we know the rate law and the rate constant for that reaction, we could really find concentration at any time, or we could find the rate of the reaction at any concentrations because we have all the information. And I should say at that temperature. If we change the temperature, our rate constant would change and so all, all bets are off. So, right, in the previous slide, we figured out that rate equaled our rate constant times chlorine dioxide squared times hydroxide to the first. And we figured out that our rate constant was 2.3 times 10 to the 2 molarity to the negative 2 inverse seconds, All right? So now, right, what's the rate of this reaction when the concentration of chlorine dioxide is 0.84 molar and hydroxide is 0.37 molar? We can do that because we know the rate constant of the reaction, right? So rate equals, we'll just plug in what we know, 2.3 times 10 to the 2 times my concentration of chlorine dioxide, 0.84 molar squared times my concentration of hydroxide, 0.37 molar to the first. All right, so times 
0.37 times 0.84, square that. So I get my rate equals about 5.99 times 10 to the one. Um, we multiplied those together, right? That cancels out with this, and that leaves us with molarity per second. Um, so to put this in you know, reasonable significant figures, I would say the rate equals you know, 6.0 times 10 to the one um, molar per second, which it might seem like a big jump looking at the rates that we're starting with, but we also did a big jump, right, with our concentrations as well. 0.06 to 0.8 is a big change. Um, and we also did like a factor of 10 change in concentration there as well. All right, so hopefully that kind of helps with what you, the problems you would see.